Greetings and welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, this is going to be an interesting show, I think. I'm going to try not to swear. <laughs> uh, but I'll tell you, this, uh, this whole border issue is kind of crazy. And so it's even drying out even the, the techies and all the other weirdness all over the place. And so um, such it is. I think we should uh, certainly cover it. So... Uh, let's go ahead and di dive into the comments first. Um, so, greetings, everybody. Richard Addison, how's it going there? Good distros one you feel comfortable using. Uh, Libre Secure is a good distros one endorsed by the Free Software Foundation. Woohoo! <laughs> just kidding. Um, uh, GNOME just hurts to use, yeah. Uh, people who make Pepperon OS should release one based on Mate. Spearman OS, anyone? Ooh, there you go. There you go. Um, analog, how's it going there? Scott, greetings. What's up? Uh, present arms, hello there. Angelo, sup, yo? Uh, Craig Lilly, how's it going there? The switch to Linux is in the house. Um, Q1 Fiend, I hope you saw the kitty cam. Daniel, hello there. How's it going there? Maybe a puppy cam now? No, no, I am not a dog person. Uh, my mother married some backwoods hillbilly jerk who had seven dogs. His wife had, or his mother had five dogs and she moved in the house too. I was itching to get the hell out of there. And the last thing I ever want to see in my life again is another dog. Especially since she had like, she had two chihuahuas and a Boston Terrier. And then three or four Dobermans, a Basset Hound, some mutt that lived in the barn. It literally had the name, the dog in the barn. And then they ch chained up this other dog that would not stop yapping all day long while they all go to work and leave me stranded in the middle of a country farmhouse in the middle of nowhere. I said, put that dog in the barn or you're going to come back tomorrow and it's going to be dead. Um, yeah, I'm not a dog person. My apologies. Um, it, it's bad life experiences. <laughs> really bad life experiences. <laughs> KO2610, greetings. Oh, oh, Q1 Fiend says hi to CJ. Hi, Q1 Fiend. How are you doing? All right. Wow. Carbon Programmer, how's it going there? Uh, Gibber and a sup, yo. Pizza, pizza, pizza. I'm going to have some pizza a couple times this week, I think. I got some nice homemade fresh pizza sauce I just made the other day, and we're going to experiment with making buffalo chicken pizza. Never tried that one before. We're going to give it a try this weekend. It's going to be awesome. Daniel, how's it going there? It's going good for this on this end. Angelo says cute cat. Thank you, Angelo. I'm cute. I know it. He's the star of the show. That's CJ. He's darling. Uh, let's see, starting a pizza, starting a new series called Good or Smash. <laughs> series I review super cheap products. <laughs> That's a great idea, man. That's good. Now, I mean, it could get expensive, though. I mean, I'll tell you, pretty much anything by Digiland, <laughs> smash it. You don't have to review it, just smash it. <laughs> um, Kitty is wishing you'd get a quieter keyboard so he could sleep. Oh, I know. Hello, Terry. Yeah, you know, kitty's, kitty's okay. Um, let's see. Putting a filter on the phone is harder. Uh, Tom, why, f uh, why Friday night news? Wait, what? Why Friday night news? Um, I don't know why I started doing Friday night news. I can't remember. Uh, but I do do news on Friday night if you're new to the channel. Um, uh, 9 o'clock Eastern Time. I do generally three topics of news, and I have so many articles right now, although I think we're going to take care of some of those here today. Uh, hello, Frost Ranger of the Frozen Realm. Problem is I might have some sponsorships from people at school who want me to promote their YouTube channel so I can afford to do those videos. <laughs> Can't do the series without it. Yeah. Uh, same issue with horses. Yeah. Flea free? Um... Flee significantly better. Um, I only, I, I think I got two or three off of the other cat today. I didn't get any off of him today, but we'll see. They're still itching a little bit more. Um, so, but I don't know. We'll, we'll see. If, uh, if, if I, I might have to give him another bath. I know two baths in one year, these things are going to hate me, but oh well. Uh, so I guess puppy for Christmas is a bad idea. Yeah, no, don't give me a puppy for Christmas. Uh, Porter Smith, greetings. Long time the fact, if we are allowed to innovate, uh, private citizens and companies will eventually beat big government to the punch. 
we allow to innovate, private citizens and companies will eventually... I'm not sure I understand what you're saying. Kitty wants some treats. Yep. What up, my dude? Greetings, Eric. How's it going there? It's pretty good. Might also monetize it. There you go. Okay, it's on the green screen. What's on the green screen? Oh, it is on the green screen. Oh, you know why? I double-checked all my stuff. Thank you. I my, my article one's good, and I forgot to change my other one. Thank you. My apologies. Uh, da, 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 da. There we are. Thank you. Yeah, I, I got the... Um, I got the, uh, I fixed the, uh, the other one, and I'd assume they were both okay. You know what happens when you make assumptions, right? Yeah, that's what I did. I made some assumptions this morning. Oh, well. Oh, well. Let me just move the comment feed down just a touch as well so I don't block the Wednesday. There we go. Thank you. Uh, let's see. I'm distro hopping way too much, so this stream might help. Very good. Yep, I, I, I actually have notes. I have notes for that half. Of course, you can't see the notes. They're transparent. <laughs> uh, am I a flat earther too? Uh, of course. The earth's going to be very flat when God's done with it. I'm a massive libertarian. Okay. If you use Magia, what do you think of it? I have not used Magia, no. Lan Yopez, greetings. Uh, let's hear your opinion on the border. Uh, hello, everyone. A little late. Had, a tr had trash and a cat to tend to. A kitty to tend to, really? <laughs> hello, Brandon. How are you? Um, Adolphus, greetings. Um... All righty, let's go ahead and talk about this controversial border issue, shall we? We're going to go ahead and push the start record button, and then we're going to rerun the intro and dive on into it. Welcome back to Switched to Linux. I know it's not a tech-related topic, but a lot of tech companies have surprisingly chimed in on, the, on all this, so we're going to talk about the border and uh, the border as it separates us. Um, this has been a huge story, um, and I don't recall another story recently getting so much um, uh, so much public time and from so many different directions. And it's kind of a very interesting thing to watch this. And I have some strong opinions on it because, you know, I mean, I, I came from, from poor backgrounds and I came from a lot of, uh, um, a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of growing in my early years and in my take it was it was a lot of learning responsibility and responsibility is something our modern society does not want to do and that's actually the filter by which I look at this now to understand why we're actually talking about this on a mostly tech and privacy and security type news now this is most relates probably to security not tech security like I usually do but security for the country and of course there's a whole lot of there's a whole lot of people that really want to divide the country they want to get us scared uh, they want to be like there's all these terrorists coming in and all this kind of stuff and the reality is we have to address this but I want to show you why I'm covering this now nearly every article here is coming from the verge and a lot of the reason is I, I just wanted to grab some quick examples. This isn't like the news where I'm diving back into things. And what I'm seeing is a lot of the media outlets that we have really are kind of uh, kind of like a, a very liberalist bend to them. And so with a very liberalist bend like that, uh, we get a lot of a lot of these views. Now, we are in a politically divided country. And I think we should completely do away with all political parties. Completely. Just do away with them. We don't need political parties. Because all that happens is people get taught up in the political parties and we end up with this deeply, deeply, massively divided country that separates us more than unites us. And we are sitting here talking about separation at the border. Of course, we're talking mostly about family separation. But here's how bad the issue is. These are the tech companies we're going to be looking at. 
Apple CEO Tim Cook says family separations at the U.S. border are inhumane and need to stop. Airbnb founders call Trump's family separation policy heartless, cruel, and immoral. Microsoft said it's dismayed by child separations over criticism over ICE contract. Permanent tech CEOs are denouncing Trump's border separation policy. Tim Cook, Mark Zuckerberg. What the, uh, nobody separates anybody in this world more than Mark Zuckerberg. Um, and others are calling for immediate change. Uh, we're going to get to that article in a minute. So this is kind of the snapshot that we're seeing. All of these companies, a lot of politicians, a lot of people, like, it's so in inhumane. It's so horrible. It's so problematic. And yeah, we have a serious problem at our border. And I wanted to say, how serious is this problem? So I went ahead and I looked at a few different places and all of the numbers seem to agree. This chart here is from a government site and uh, this is U.S. Customs and Border Protection and these numbers seem to be accurate. No matter which sources I'm pulling from, these numbers seem to be accurate. This is over an eight month period of time from October 1st to May 31st this last year. 252,187 people have been stopped for illegally coming across the border. And I want to focus on that word illegally. Now, so you understand this, 200, oh, I ran my numbers wrong. My apologies. My number is going to be a little bit wrong. I accidentally put in a wrong number there. If we have 252,187 people, and we're going to divide this just by, um, we're going to divide this by 240, which is 30 times 8, okay? Now, of course, that might end up being 239, it might end up being 242, I, I don't know. But 240 is a good estimate. This means every single day, 1,050 people are picked up illegally attempting to cross the border. That is a big problem. And the reason this is such a big problem is we have to figure out what to do with these people. Now, on the one hand, people are saying, we can't separate anybody. Well, we have a little problem. And that is that we have laws in this country. And we have immigration laws. We have regular laws. A thousand people are being detained in this very short period of time a day. We have to figure out what to do. We have a couple options. We can keep everybody together. We can keep these quasi family units together. And I say quasi because when adults and children cross the border together, they may or may not be related. We need to ascertain what's going on. Okay. So we can either separate them while we figure out, are these people related? And why are they coming into the country? But we also have to deal with the fact that we have laws. Okay? It is illegal to enter this country illegally. There is a proper channel to enter the United States. And that's the way we need to enter it. So the people that are doing this are breaking our laws, taking our resources, utilizing our funds. And we're not exactly all that well off right now. I'm not sure if anybody else has actually noticed that, but we're not. Okay. And so we're not going to take these people who have crossed over into the country, a thousand of them a day, and put them up at the Hilton in the most beautiful, luxurious family suites. We can throw them all together in prison. Well, we figure out if it's worthy or not. And that kind of brings me to this one article I, I kind of crossed over uh, pre pretty quick. Um, this is another one of these uh, one of these articles. A detained immigrant comes down with chicken pox days after prison staff say there weren't enough doctors. This is a guy who broke the law. He was caught. He was sent to prison because a thousand other people a day are doing the same thing. It's one thing if you don't get caught, but you got caught, buddy. Face the music. 
We have an overcrowded prison problem. We have an issues with these. Now, the reality is the holding cells they're holding adults in are not all that great because they are caught in the act of committing a crime. The children may or may not have been complicit. They may or may not be related. We don't know. The children are going to different places, which are very nice places. And we are utilizing our resources to give them medical care, to give them food, to give them education. We have a lot of problems in our country right now that we're not even close to solving. Now, first and foremost, I think that the religious people who are talking about compassion, we need to stand up and we need to deal with this. So the government's not footing a bill. In fact, that's exactly what one company couple wanted to do. A California couple raises over $4 million in a Facebook fundraiser for immigrant families. That's awesome. Good. This is the type of thing we need. You know, swallow hard. I know many of you don't want to believe it, but the hospitals and the schools systems were generally set up by Christians. Let them take some of the responsibility. As for a country, if we cannot afford to pay for our own issues, we certainly can't afford to pay for others. My secular solution is once a day, take all the kids that were picked up from the border, drive them back into Mexico into the nearest town, drop them off and let the Mexican government deal with them because it's their problem, not ours. Now, that's a little too harsh, and that's why I hope more couples like this and Christian groups step up and actually help volunteer and take care of kids. That's what really we really need to do. But as far as all this complaining about family separations, we can't separate these families at the border. I'm going to propose to you a thought system. So let's take a thousand people a day. Families. Two people per family, three people per family, four people per family. And let's converge on just two or three little cities. A thousand of us a day in droves, going through the cities, robbing the banks, shoplifting through the stores, stealing cars. What we're going to see is a really big response. When the police can't handle it, they're going to bring in the National Guard. A state of emergency is going to be handled and everyone's going to be rounded up. The adults who are actually complicit in committing crime are going to be separated from the minors that are with them in this country. Since there are so many people being dealt with, we cannot possibly deal with them so quickly. So we have to separate the children to figure out where to send them. Usually what our government is going to be doing is finding the nearest akin that can take care of them. A mother. A grandmother. Grandparent. A cousin, an uncle, a somebody who's related. But if there are an influx of a thousand a day, the children are children. They can't be charged with a crime the same way an adult can be. If you break a law, you are separated from your children in this country. So when we say we can't separate these people illegally entering our country, illegally taking our resources, we are saying to treat them better than we would treat our own citizens in the same situation. That's my thought. You see, the biggest problem is we are handling the situation with kid gloves. Now, that's a phrase, if you've not heard of that, it means extremely gently. We're handling them too gently. We're handling them like little babies. And every time we get handled too softly, we don't learn. We keep pushing the envelope. And I've experienced this as teaching. This is one of the reasons I'm not a teacher anymore. When I was teaching organic chemistry, we had an assignment to give out. And I said, you know, this is, this is a huge research project. And it was either worth 25 or 50% of their grade. I can't remember now. Um, and after six weeks, I collected rough drafts. One student did a good job. One student plagiarized the work. The rest of them handed me a single piece of paper, double spaced, with at most three quarters of the page taken in references to Cliff Notes and Wikipedia for an organic chemistry paper worth a large percentage of their grade. 
And I told these students, I said, if you do not start treating this seriously, you are all going to fail. And actually, I did warn the first student who, who did good. I pulled her in before class and I said, listen, you're the only one that did a good job. I'm reprimanding the class today. What I'm saying to the class is not meant to you. And I reprimanded the class and they got mad and they went and they told the president of the college and they're all me and the president of the college didn't like the fact that I said that. But you know what happened at the end? At the end, I got every student doing college level work because I was not afraid to say shape up or ship out. And that's the reality. It is illegal to enter this country illegally, okay? We are talking about 1,050 people per day illegally entering this country. You get caught. You do the time. And that might mean you get separated from your children for a while until we can figure out, are they your children? And do you have a legitimate reason to be here? Let's stop treating these people like this. They are entering our country without authorization. We have legal paths for entering this country. There's legal asylum. And yes, I've seen some of the cases where people are saying, but, but the, this guy, one guy's being held up. This guy's been shot at a number of times and, and uh, you know, he's trying to seek the asylum properly. I get that. But maybe he could get asylum faster if we didn't have a thousand people coming through the border illegally wasting all our resources. Maybe if we had ways to stop this, we could process more of them legally. That's my thought on this. I'm seeing all of this stuff. We can't break up the families. These people are criminals. They are caught in the act of committing a crime. And if we did this in our country, I got news for you. If, if you happen to have children and you go out and rob a bank, you're going to be separated from your family. Uh-huh. Yeah, you are. Are we asking to treat the illegals entering our country better than we treat our own citizens? Just a thought. That's my thoughts on it. What are your thoughts? Let me know. All right. Oh, uh, adopt a puppy. Nah. <clears throat> I will. Uh, I will do. Try others in VM. See what ideas I can and steal, or I mean, see what others are doing. There you go. My dad told me Trumpy Bear was sending Mexican kids to camp. Your dad needs to stop watching CNN. <laughs> okay. Uh, I've been using Kubuntu for a while, but I. Uh, got very impressed by someone reviewing Manjaro. Yeah, Manjaro is pretty cool. Switch to Arch. There you go. This is a video. <laughs> Arch, by the way. <laughs> Jordan Peterson fan? I have no idea. I, I have heard the name Jordan Peterson. I know nothing else about Jordan Peterson. So sad this has to turn all political as well. It Yeah, and sorry I had to cover it, but... I just, you just got to when every CEO of all the tech companies are coming out. In fact, I didn't cover all of the, the ICE situation. A bunch of people tried to dox a bunch of ICE people. And, and by the way, I hate what ICE is doing. I absolutely hate what they're doing. Um, I think that's uh, a branch of the government that I think needs to needs to have their uh, uh, have their authority checked. Um, I don't like what they're doing. I don't like what they're doing. But I also don't like thousands and thousands of unmitigated people entering my country every year when our country is, we are not doing very good right now. I mean, I know everyone says we're the wealthiest country in the world. No, we're not. Not even close. 
Um, we're about as or about as wealthy as our average citizen. Our average citizen has about twenty thousand dollars in credit card debt. Students leave college with an average of thirty-five to forty thousand dollars in student loan debt. We have an average of about twenty-five thousand dollars on our cars and about two hundred thousand dollars on our mortgages. That's called sunk. That's called underwater. That's called a massive negative net worth. And that's about as wealthy as our country is too. We don't have money to be dealing with everyone else's problems. Andre, yes. Uh, hello, Anarita. Greetings. Thomas Holt, hello. I love your name, Thomas. <laughs> uh, yes, media is controlled by the left. Uh, uh, political parties are like toddlers who cannot compromise and come up with a solution. Yeah, and I bet you have some experience with that. <laughs> So who, Anarita, in your opinion, is more mature? The kids in your daycare or Senate <laughs> or Congress? Green and cool war boy. How's it going there? Tribalism has destroyed our country a long time ago. Okay, not even going to watch us. Sorry, I'm interested in Linux and tech stuff. There were all kinds of channels to pick away politics. Sorry. Well, Andre, if you stick around, we're, if you're not gone already, stick around, then uh, I will be getting to the Linux part next. Uh, or actually, you can just go ahead and catch the, the edited version. I'll be cutting this into two parts. Uh, liberalists are an English classical liberalist conservative by today's standards movement based in England, started by a YouTuber named Sargon of Akkad. Yeah. See a cool war, cool war boy. Politics. Yeah, it's about how I feel, but you know, sometimes we just got to chat about some of the stuff. Greetings, James Miller. Okay, tech company corporations want illegals to come in for slave wages. <laughs> Probably. Tom for president. I'd start a war, man. <laughs> Why do other countries require legal documents to enter their countries, but the U.S. should not require the same thing? Huh? I'm a kitty person. My name is Nicole. Aww. Hmm. Hi, Nicole. How are you? I'm CJ. Okay. I don't even want to know if he has a political opinion at all. Next thing is going to be Bible stuff, I reckon. Okay, we just have a massive empty border. Yeah, okay. Sorry, but the border doors need closed. Sorry, but that that's what they need for security measures in the country. Cannot take care of millions of people. Yeah, we just can't. We, we can't take care of everybody. Guys, we cannot even take care of ourselves. We can't be handing out, dishing out free health care for everyone else. Um, Tom, border control is good for the country. These people broke our laws. We need to keep track of those who come in and out. Our job should not be given to cheap labor. Yeah. Reason we separated them because parents could be sex traffickers. That's exactly my point. We don't know who these kids are right now. Um, and that's the reality. So we have to separate them and while we figure it out. And then those that have legitimate claim, the, that's what they're not, you're not hearing. Those who have legitimate claim are reunited with their families and granted asylum. Yeah, it's happening. But it's hard to do when you're constantly dealing with this inflow. You can't process a thousand people a day. And so we have this giant just mess. Our scholarships are also not for non-citizens. We already have issues in America. We don't need to track a bunch of our resources to add to the list. Yeah. Why do other countries require uh, yeah, proper national ID would help with this? Seems all about kids who were born in the U.S. From illegal immigrants who snuck in, not a whole families. Yes, this no, this is whole families. A if a if a pregnant woman gets across the border, isn't caught, de and and delivers a baby, and now that baby is technically a U.S. citizen, it doesn't matter the citizenship of the mother. You know what happened? We're dealing with the people who got caught. <laughs> Okay, we're not dealing with a guy that that shoplifted something, and, and seven years later he comes out and says, oh, "I shoplifted something, but statute of limitations is is passed." All right, don't steal. But you know what? You got away with it. It's years have passed. Whatever. We're not dealing with all that. We're dealing with people who get caught. Uh, don't you think for-profit prisons are a problem that suck the federal budget dry? Yes, I do. 
and you're talking about immigrants directly. How about addressing the foreign policies that accelerates the issues? Um, I'm not concerned about the foreign policies. I'm concerned about people illegally entering our country, period. That's what I'm talking about. Um, here in Canada, we are taking care of millions of people who ask Canada for help, but then Canada gives them the best hotels and houses and they complain. Yeah, yeah. Kids will end up in foster care. Preach. Our Father, who art in heaven. No, yeah. <laughs> Wrong channel. Right. Take our resources, then look at U.S. foreign policies. You should listen to Ron Paul regarding this. Um, no, I don't really listen to any politicians regarding this. Um, let's see. Is a U.S. foreign policy issue stop meddling in Central American country affairs? I agree. Okay. Are refugees better take care of them? I don't need to hear white nationalist garbage anymore. All right. Bye forever. Later. I hope that you also leave. Um, let's see. Uh, you While you are leaving Switch to Linux, you can leave Apple. You can leave um, Airbnb. You can leave Microsoft. You can leave Facebook. Um, who else is in here? I hope you leave them all. Guys, this is why I'm talking about this. Oh, you leave YouTube too. Leave YouTube. Um, Dara, who's that one? I don't know who that one is. Oh, leave Yelp. Oh, leave Uber. Yeah, leave Uber anyway. Leave Lyft. Okay, so yeah, leave Switch to Linux because I'm discussing talk about the issue. You better be leaving Lyft, leave Yelp, leave Uber, leave YouTube, leave Google, leave, uh, oh yeah, look at this, Twitter, um, Facebook, Airbnb. I mean, guys, leave them all. Leave them all. This is a world issue, and it directly impacts the country where I live. You better believe I'm talking about it. All right. Um, let's see. Get the same talk all the time in school. I'm, I'm always I'm the only one that actually gives a, a Fig Newton. <laughs> Thank you for editing that, by the way. Um, and actually tries. Just uh, Others just goof off making jokes and playing on the phones. I am better at Linux than politics. Why? Just because I disagree with your politics? Sorry. Um, you may not agree with what he says, but we're defending the right to say. Yep. Now, this is U.S. foreign policy issues. Okay, you know what? You, you keep on leaving that, so I'm removing your comment. Bye. If I see the same exact comment one more time in my feed, I'm just going to ban you. Um, you're talking about the symptoms of Western politics. No, I'm not. This is not oligarchy. Trust me, I talk about oligarchy on this channel a lot. It's very related to corporatocracy. I'm extremely knowledgeable about how this works and how politics works, by the way, and corporations and business and education. I'm actually a fairly knowledgeable dude. All right. Um, I'm not. What in the world are you talking about? I'm talking about people breaking the law, entering this country illegally. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, either enter the country legally or buy yeah uh he's citizen of the country and such as to say what's going on the country yep seriously who drew the arbitrary fake line that determined america's america um that was established in a war a long time ago unfortunately Oh, technically he's watching NBC. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> touche, touche. Um, okay, I'm sure who to believe. There's misinformation everywhere. Not sure who to believe, I'm guessing you're saying. Yeah, that's the thing. Good evening, Skyrim Holmes. How's it going there? Place landmines of the border. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure I'd want to go that far. The feeling that joining this stream this time I missed a few things. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> I think all kids should be sent to their closest relatives that isn't in jail. Yeah, and that's exactly the case, Pizza. The problem is we don't know who these kids are. That's the problem. You know, if 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 a U.S. kid father goes out, you know. Maybe it's a father, son living in a house together. Father goes out, robs a bank. They come back home. They do a search warrant. They find the kid. 
The kid goes into foster care. We have a school system in place to track down who is who. Who is this kid related to? Who are the parents? Who are the grandparents? Who are the sisters, aunts, uncles, cousins? And the first step in any social service, because we don't want to be utilizing resources, is figure out is there a family member that can take care of this child? Okay, I've done a lot of work with mentoring kids um, in agencies and otherwise, and I will tell you that's exactly, in fact, one of the kids that I worked with was taken out of his home. He was put in his grandmother's home, which wasn't a ton better, um, but it was a lot safer than his home. And that's what they try and do. They're not about, they're not sitting there evil and going, you know, we're separate all these people, torture them. That's not what they're trying to do, but they have to figure out who these kids need to go to. And that's what they're trying to do. But they're getting thousands of kids come in. Like, uh, it, it's easy to say hundreds of kids per day coming in. That's a big problem. That's the issue. No, dollar is about to collapse, most likely. I, I would probably agree to that. Trump could should crack down on Mexico to accept Central Americans. Um, end of times, it's all going to crash soon. I kind of agree. And Fitzy, sa F Fisty Splinter says, I want it all to end. I'm with you. It is tough. This is hard. Okay, uh, Tom, just let me say the preschoolers would teach the government a lesson or two. Ouch. Please don't this wrong, but your mic is overdriven, being overmodulated. Cut it back a little bit. Yeah, it's. I don't usually have it this close. I'm trying to get better audio quality. I don't like the. There's a lot of open echo uh, in my stream sometimes, and I'm trying to get away with from that. Um. Forget all of our data being collected and stored by private companies, which can be used against us. Mm -hmm. UN requires refugees to seek asylum in the country uh, they enter, so Mexico should pick up all the Central Americans. Hmm. Crazy amount of debt. Yep. The law is the law. Enforce it. That's the thing. I don't go around breaking laws. And if I, if I do inadvertently break some laws or, or maybe I am breaking some laws and I get caught, it's time to face the music. You know? And that's how we should all pay, take. Those intelligence can tell whether a kid belongs to the family or not. Yeah. Will the Western civilization fall? I think so. What do I think about John Oliver? Um... For the most part, I do not like John Oliver. Um, there's a few good things that he that he says. I catch a show every now and again if the topic seems interesting to me. I would probably say I agree with him. I'd say thirty-ish percent of the time. See, that's the thing is we can't we can't find out who can we agree with one hundred percent of the time and stick with it because that just becomes this closed source boring place we need to share and trade ideas you should be watching things that you disagree with at times um, I, I don't like watching Asia at Pi talk though I have a tendency to want to punch my computer screen I don't want to do that um, but yeah so I mean, I agree with John Oliver maybe about 30% of the times. I love what he had to say about net neutrality. I thought he was spot on. I love what he had to say about Sinclair. I thought that was spot on. But some of the things I watch from him, it's just like, what what are you smoking, dude? I mean, I don't know. Um, but it's the, the reality is he and I are, are have different political bends. If you can't carry your own weight, how can you expect to carry another person on top of that? Yeah. George Washington was right. Per political parties were a bad idea. Open borders was an idea to bring in new liberal voters, but the but other others the bill and the problems. So others whining and heck with America. Not all crimes have statute of limitations. Correct. Yes, there are. That's why I use the example of shoplifting because shoplifting definitely has a clear statute of limitations. Uh, Craig Lilly already left Microsoft. Good. So did I. Uh, let's see. Hello, world of Linux. Joey P798, chill, bro. Nah. <laughs> you haven't seen me on fire, man. <laughs> Tom got triggered. Ooh, 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 ooh. Triggered, trigger. Be doing Pres Trump a world of good on your firm stance as well argued. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Craig. Um, I think you are very shallow in your commentary on politics, but I defend your right to express your views and your Linux content is great. Thank you. All right. I don't use a lot of the services. Okay. All the mainstream stuff is dead for me. Yeah. 
Yeah, I've pretty much left all those companies myself, by the way. As a Hispanic, uh, uh, I as a Hispanic love Trump and the zero tolerance policy. Good. Yeah. See, that's the thing. He's not against. He's not against the Hispanic or the Mexican or. And I, my apologies. I don't know exactly what terminology you want to use. He's not against that. He's against people breaking the law. <laughs> that's what he's against. Um. All right. And I have to say that our border fence is a joke. You can drive through it, but there are plenty of holes in the fence where you can tell people have gone through. Yeah. Yeah. I think all this is strange as being vented to stay significant. I think I just started watching a stream when Tom, <laughs> Tom gets triggered. <laughs> Very important topic. Those, uh, those with ears will hear. Let those with eyes will see. Indeed. Absolutely agree with that. Okay. You're going to have detractors. Don't worry about it. Yeah, that's that's fine. All right. Uh, Mexican-American wars. What set the borders for Mexico and the U.S.? Yeah. Why was that war unfortunate? Uh, well, I, I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of, of pretty much any wars, but at the same token, the reality is land disputes happen. We are we are people. We are people. Simple barbed wire fence with some railroad ties welded to make it hard to drive through, but a ramp can easily get around them. Major problem agreed, uh, agreed with misinformation comment. Yeah. It's time you make very good points. Okay. Uh, there was a ton of misinformation. The media is manipulating people. They always try to do so, but today it's not working as well. And that's a lot of the reason why they want to put an end to systems like YouTube and where other people that actually have functioning brains can actually get on and talk about things that aren't the, the talking points of either the government, the corporation, or the rich guy down the road. I don't know. Um, been to Mexico. You have to fill out a ton of documents. In Canada, we didn't. Yep. I, I mean, I did see one guy, I think it was on Philip DeFranco's show yesterday, somebody said, why doesn't the U.S. just take over Mexico, we can let all the people in they want, but then let our military go and straighten out the, the gangs down there. I'll, I'll take that solution. Sure. We can add Mexico as, as, as another state, allow our government to clean up the, the streets. Let's just declare six months of gangs, shape up, ship out, or you're getting the National Guard and uh, and the Black Ops team coming after you. I think it'd be kind of funny to watch to watch uh, watch the I don't know watch the Rangers take on M13. That'd be fun. I'd I'd buy tickets for that. <laughs> Let's do it. Let the U.S. in. Allow Mexico as a state. They get United States citizenship. All of them. They can. Come and go as they please. We get to go down there and clean the country up a little bit. Not, not that we're super clean ourselves. But, you know, at least I can say we don't have a, a serious threat of walking down most cities in the United States. Okay. Um, and that is, unfortunately, uh, an issue that you get sometimes in Mexico. So I, I, I heard that argument. That sounds like a... I, I'd accept that. I mean, I, I'll compromise here. I'll compromise. Problem is the media has mixed up the words asylum seeker with immigration. Those that are not in danger of prosecution should be stopped at any border. Yes. Uh, persecution. Yes. Correct. I agree. I remember Rachel Mad Cow crying crocodile tears. Got to have borders to do background checks. One of the characteristics of a sovereign country is the ability to control its borders. We are only trying to uh, break uh, so uh, back a sovereign power. Okay. Media education corporations are run by the left. Uh, human compassion is doing the best for the child, and yes, sometimes displacement is the best. Mm -hmm. Let's not get started on EU and immigration. Yeah. Um, I do agree it's going to crash. That's what the left wants. Actually, I, mean, I don't think it's what the left wants. They don't realize what the crash is going to do to them. Uh... What's left under Seattle with the homeless is allowing them to run the city. Not, not to mention that Amazon basically forced the, the city to, to do away with the home, home, homeless program. Lord forbid Amazon pay $100,000 to the city to, to help the homeless population that has sprung up because housing is completely unaffordable. Lord. Um, but Jeff Bezos is there on Twitter. I'm a rich man in America now. What should I spend my trillions on? How about paying liberal wages to your employees? Full disclosure, use Amazon. Um, 
If other countries are so bad, why do we not hear about it in the news? Uh, there's a spirit of lawless out there that's gonna, and it's related to putting God aside. I agree. I agree. Jush. Very biased, and he's right a lot and wrong a lot. Yeah. Love that saying, gotta face the music. Yep. Uh, my cousins told me Sweden might become a third world country by 2020. Yeah. I agree. It is. That's interesting place right now. Am I a libertarian? I am not. I am not a libertarian because I think some things should be illegal. I am not for all this mass legalization of recreational marijuana going through our town or going through our country. Uh, I've seen what long-term impact of marijuana has. It's not pretty. Um, and uh, uh, having the scientific background that I have, I, I know it's not particularly good. I am I find no problem with saying let's legalize it, but a true libertarian doesn't want there to be any laws at all. But the reality is there are forces in our world that can destroy a person and it's better to do an attempt at getting them off. A pure libertarian, a 13 year old should be able to go in and buy some cigarettes despite he's not intelligent enough to know how bad it is and how addictive it is. That's why I'm not a libertarian. Um, it, it mostly boils down to the fact that there are things in this world that can destroy us and it's better if we get them off the streets as much as possible. Seeing results and not having basic civics taught in school. Sinclair is amazing. I do disagree with you on net neutrality, but I'm still lis here listening to you. Reason why we have the pervasive society is because of a man named Alfred Kinsey. Greetings, Snuggle. How's it going? Hello? Yes, we're here. <laughs> Uh, I almost broke my iPad watching Asian Pie. Yeah, I'm, so I'm not the only one, huh? <laughs> hmm. However, the left has been pushing against the rule of law since the mid-60s. Yep. Rules for radicals is their playbook, yeah? I think school is useless. The only class that is useful are math and maybe world history. I don't need to know about the microbiome works for a job in programming. Um, yeah, I mean, I think there's a, a lot of value in some education, but I'm, I'm probably with you a little bit. Tim Hay, Tim Nay, greetings. Uh, only two crimes do not have statute of limitations, tax evasion and murder. Um, I think first degree rape does not in some jurisdictions as well. Um, tax evasion doesn't though. Huh? I didn't know that. I knew murder was one of them. Feeling rough today, but made myself get things done. Got a hot shower, more to do. All right. Glad glad you got back to work. I think computer tech is useful, but I already know everything. <laughs> well, then you, well, I mean, you're already learning though. Like, th that's the thing. You are so far above your peers in the computer tech pizza. And that's, but it's good you're continuing to challenge yourself by learning new programs, new operating systems and things. Keep that up. That's good. Uh, this reminds me of people who think that the, other owe them a living without contributing to those who are sponging off of them. Canada, they are smoking a lot more from what I hear these days. Math is useful. Language arts used to be useful, but now it's just assignments over and over again. Yeah. Let's, let's make this interesting. Let's just do your world history in other languages. Okay. West will fail because of itself. There's actually a documentary about that. It's called, uh, uh, I think it's called Decadence, Decline of the Western World fascinating documentary if you get a chance to watch it mm. am i anti-capitalism no i am actually pro-capitalism i'm just anti-corporatocracy we are not in a capitalist society right now we are in a corporatocracy in a capitalist society google would have been able to start an isp in every city they decided to. They weren't able to because Comcast bought the government to pass regulations to block them. That's called a corporatocracy, not a capitalist society. In a capitalist society, the government stays out of business. When Google can't get into the ISPs, we got a problem. Okay, so no, I'm not anti-capitalism. I'm anti-corporatocracy. Uh, is it normal for US based web web domain company to ask for photo based ID if there is something they don't like during setup process? 
Uh, I have heard of A2 doing that before, but it is not normal. And me personally, I wouldn't do it. No, you may not have my, you may not have a way to steal my identity. I'm setting up a web hosting company. You don't like it? <laughs> and go on to the next one. <laughs> um... And I think, I mean, I use A2 and I have an affiliate link for A2. Um, but uh, yeah, if, uh, and when I set up mine, I didn't need to do that. And uh, the moment they required that, I'd say, no, I'm not doing business with you. Um, there is no justification for sending a copy of your ID off to somebody. That's an identity theft package right there. Like, no, I'm buying a web hosting company, not opening a bank account, you moron. <laughs> uh, Mexican American war was caused after the American annexed Texas. Texas was independent at the time. Mexico didn't recognize it. Then Texas decided to join the U.S. So Mexico declared war and lost. Yes, they did. <laughs> hmm. Love history of I have a job in programming doesn't work out. I want to be a historian. There you go. Uh, sheesh. <coughs> I am losing my place. Yeah, this is a lively conversation, though. How many uh, how many thumbs down are on this video? Somebody tell me that. I'm not monitoring that end. I'm sure it's a lot. We're controversial today. Amazon actually wasn't beyond uh, the pushback the small business were. Okay. I think middle school and high school should be like college where you can choose your courses. Well, you can choose electives. They aren't the same. Yep. Beyond politics, things have gone so far off the rails, you can't even have a logical conversation about immigration because people don't use logic. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> United States of America, North and South, annex it all from Anchorage down to Chile. One big, nice, free vacation, free housing, free health care. Nice. I'm not sure about free housing and free health care and all that because now it starts to sound like a socialist country and that never turns out well. <clears throat> Um, people shouldn't put others in tribes like left and right. It's just a distraction that prevents real exchange of ideas. Well, then they need to stop sitting on places like that themselves. Uh, I think you're con confusing libertarianism with anarchy. No, I'm not. Libertarianism is a person that believes the only thing there is that government should be doing is protecting the borders and delivering the mail. That is the definition of a libertarian. They are not people. They think that government should be out of everything. Kids should be able to do whatever they want. Um, adults should be able to do whatever they want. Everybody in society, that's anarchy, by the way. Libertarianism at its at its pure definition is that the only difference is that in libertarianism they still they still see a government with a basic uh, w with a, a basic central system which was designed to deliver mail and protect the borders. <clears throat> um, should be legal because it costs too much money to enforce it being illegal. See, that's not a real good reason to make something legal, though. That's unfortunately. <clears throat> yeah, the THC, though, is uh, is uh, the component that helps work, particularly with glaucoma, for example. <clears throat> uh, I've not started learning European language, currently learning Mandarin Chinese. Don't even know what a recreational nuke is, but it sounds hilarious in concept. Wasn't that the thing from, what was that movie? Um, what was that movie where the one guy was riding the nuclear warhead? I forget what movie that was called. Somebody know, will know what it is. Linux was political. Which distro would be liberal and which would be conservative? Um, liberal would be Ubuntu um, because it's progressing more towards 
collecting all the things, the same things that the rest of the society is moving towards. I think um, conservative would be arch. <clears throat> As it takes a strong stance against a lot of that change, despite it's a rolling release. Mm -hmm. That's my thought. I don't know. Close all borders, throw away the debt, and nobody is out. Okay. But <laughs> it's communist. <laughs> Imagine now an ICBM with a merry-go-round attached to it. Yeah. The FCC conference with Asia at Pi when they announced the bill was going to be passed. I threw my headphones and damaged it. <laughs> oh. Fortunately, I didn't break anything. Hmm. <laughs> For Generation Z, I can uh, daughter the generation of nihilism, narcissism, and degeneracy. I was born in the wrong time period. Hmm. Uh, right for most part, let's see. <clears throat> oh boy, I am not sure I'm ever going to get anything. I'm going to scan the comments, see if there's anything that co pops out right at me. This uh, this was one.com and also didn't like the idea of having an emailing a scan of photo ID to be a driver's license or passport. Now, that is that is completely nope. I think the government can still. Yes, government can still exist with capitalism. I agree. Um, Seven thumbs down. Woohoo! <laughs> I caused the controversy. That's what I was going for. <laughs> oh boy. Seven down, 24 up. See, controversy is not a bad thing. 73 views. I have uh, 76 currently and 80 peak. I can see that number. I just can't see the likes and dislikes right now. No fan of Amazon ended my Prime account after talking to a former employee. Yeah, I mean, I use Amazon, but um, I'm not an advocate of a lot of things what they do. Correction. <laughs> Greater than nine disapprovals. <laughs> uh, it's funny. Republicans used to be left-leaning. Democrats used to be right-leaning. Then during the Great Depression, they switched. The Middle East is full of conflict because theocratic dictatorships and radicals might not be a safe place to go. Um, what if I told you you could be a, uh, be a little, I libertarian, um, uh, meaning you are anti-authoritarian. No, I'm not anti-authoritarian either. I am hard to pin down. The moment when you realize you're pressing X instead of alt tab. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, conservatives would be Gen 2. Okay, all right. So I didn't think of Gen 2. Uh, a little more left-leading, I believe, in letting people lead their own lives and taking consequences and benefits of their actions. Actually, that's more right-leaning, though, unfortunately. That's the thing is that even the term somebody had made to come out left and right, we don't even know what we are anymore. And it's that's kind of the weird part, you know. Um, <clears throat> leftist Ubuntu, okay. Somebody else agrees. Okay, right wing arch. Okay, so I was kind of on the right path. Other people agree. Twenty for twenty seven years of having two. Oh, I'm sorry. That's not good, man. Uh, let's see. So I think first people to go over the wall are the ones that want the war. Okay. See how many wars started then. <clears throat> Jeez, there's still like 10 comments coming in per minute. That's crazy. Tom, which more important in your opinion, democracy, representative government, or capitalism? Ooh, that's a great question. Well, I think that I think that really a representative government and capitalism can coexist. Um, and and in reality, they they have. Um, 
the the real the, the thing is that a representative government like what we're supposed to have is when the people will determine the the people elect a official to speak on their behalf and that person speaking on their behalf is supposed to speak with a majority of their uh, their voter base has voted them in for it doesn't it did, even if they disagreed with it what mattered isn't what their opinions it's what the people in their jurisdiction have have wanted jurisdiction uh, whatever it is you know what I'm talking about um, that's that's the reality is that that's how they're supposed to be voting for for what the majority of their districts wanted that's a representative government that's not what we have unfortunately um, but what is more important, I think capitalism, uh, because true real capitalism can take care of more problems than government ever could. Read about GDPR. Um, I actually did a video about GDPR. Um, Linux for video editing, planning to switch to Linux, currently using Vegas for video editing. I have no knowledge of Linux software. Um, the one I use is Caden Live. Um, Lightworks is available on Linux. I'm not sure if that's open source or not, but they do have an official Linux version. There is a paid version, which has more support. There's a free version, which I think has everything except you can't encode in, in full HD. And there's a new one called DaVinci Resolve um, from Blackmagic Designs that I want to look at soon. They recently released a Linux version, also a paid version and a free version. Uh, so those are three of them that are native. There's also, if you want something like um, something like Windows Movie Maker, something cheap and basic, um, OpenShot. But the, the most popular native Linux software for that is Kden Live. Um, so that's what you want to look into. Um, but then look, check out Lightworks and DaVinci Resolve as well. Shoot, YouTube didn't notify me saying you're going to live stream. Thanks, YouTube. Oh, Paper Bag Man, you, you, missed, you, missed, the, uh, you missed the lively discussion. Okay, if the West Falls, should we rebuild upon the remains like we did in Rome's or should we just devolve in anarchy? I think what we should do and what we will do is probably different. Um, I think rebuilding is the way to go. I mean, honestly. I have a Facebook ad on your live stream for me right now. Oh, boy. Oh, oh we, we rose to 10. <laughs> we rose to 10 thumbs downs. All right. Uh, did Trump do good on North Korea? Um, honestly, it's too early to tell, in my opinion. Every nation needs border to protect themselves. Illegal aliens are nothing more than invaders. That's why illegal immigration is intolerant in places like, say, China. Yeah, I mean, you think we have it bad separating your children? You go try and try and bust your way into North Korea. You'll get shot before you get there. They won't even ask you questions. That's not the road. <laughs> That's it. I mean, come on. Wow, how dare we take these children, put them, put them in a place where they have a warm bed, education, and meals, and medical care. Lord forbid. Um... <clears throat> Nation's own citizens are more important than illegal aliens. Yeah. Do away with the electoral college. Agree. I don't think an elementary user and an arch user would last long in a relationship. <laughs> Very lucid, only giving well thought opinions. Rarity on YouTube. Thank you, TSM. I appreciate it. Where do you get the idea that Europe is not doing so well? We are doing great. Uh, it depends on which countries you're in. Uh, Spain, not doing so hot. Um, Sweden, not doing so hot. Switzerland, doing great. <laughs> you know, um, I think Germany's doing pretty good. Um, I don't follow all of the European stuff as much as I could for sure, but, um, it's, it's a mishmash for sure. Okay. Live rendering time made a 10 minute video. It took almost 40 minutes to render it 10. Um, well, I mean, that's, very possibly, I mean, you're, what type of computer are you using? 
Like DaVinci Resolve, Crash is unstable. Okay, thank you for that. I haven't had a chance to look at it yet. Um, read about GDPR in relation to system information. I did not read about it specifically in, in connection to Ubuntu. Um, but um, because Ubuntu is not collecting uh, what they term personally identifiable information, including IP addresses, I do not believe they're actually running afoul of GDPR. Uh, that's my thought, but if you know something different, um, I haven't read up on anything. But everything I know about GDPR and everything I know about Ubuntu tells me that what Ubuntu is doing is not in violation of it. We have opposing political views. Yeah, I, I, no doubt. Black Pigeon Speaks. Huh. I've seen a few of the videos from Black Pigeon Speaks. Is he more of a conspiracy? I don't know. Um, I'll watch a lot of videos on a lot of different topics. Uh, capitalism, so I should get paid whenever someone's willing to pay me. Yeah. Okay, to separate children from their parents. If the if they are illegally coming into our country, um, if they if if a group of of adults and children are entering our country illegally, you better believe we should separate them up. Well, we figure out are these really your children? Um, are you breaking the law? Well, you apparently are breaking the law. Is there a reason you are risking getting caught and being separated for it? That's my take on it. So, um, so evil Tom, we are scum for doing what's best for the children. Yeah, I know. Electoral college is good, more representative system than, and people forget the U.S. is actually a republic. Okay. For tools, you need to make great videos on Linux. Uh, GIMP for Blender, GIMP for graphics, Audacity for awesome audio, and Caden Live to tape it together. Only 12 thumbs down now. See, it's rising. It was 7. Now it's 12. All right. You're in the Netherlands, and you tell me Sweden's doing great. Okay. Well, okay, well, crime being low is not the only indication of if a country is doing good. But but I don't know. I'm not I'm not going to debate on that because I haven't sat down and stared at everything. Um, I, I can tell you that there's there's people I talk to from Sweden who say there are a lot of problems um, there. So I'm not going to get into a giant debate on all that right now because it's not something I've researched right this moment. Um Germany's doing very well, but if you look at the statistics and cash flow internally, EU is going into Germany. Quite a few other countries have contracting economies do same currency. Only if the IP address can point to a specific person, I guess. Yeah, the one of the most controversial things about GDPR is that the IP address is considered personal information, which doesn't make any sense because we connect to more Wi-Fi networks than we ever have before. Uh, opted for Linux light hardware, etc. Italy and Greece are wrecks. Yep. Yeah. Your parents should have. Uh, I think the parents shouldn't have come in illegally. That's the best way to prevent them from being separated. Yeah. Next door neighbor is teaching a seven-year-old girl how to figure out why an engine on a generator wasn't working. He made me smile, said he doesn't want her to grow up and be a normal zombie. That is awesome. We need more of those. Hillary Cankles Clinton has done a 180 on immigration since 2014. Uh, would, you would separate a child that getting mistreated, so not never. Wait, what? I'd separate a child that getting mistreated. Wait, what? I don't know. Okay. Wife just said she's ready for either Mars or the woods. Yep. Sweden looks good to me, but other Scandinavian countries are doing better. Connection infection going on. Woohoo! I made it to the bottom of the comments. All right. We're going to put a note right there, and we'll come back to the comments when we get on to, to softer, lighter, and, and happier issues. Maybe I should have done the Linux one first. Um, so we're going to be talking about our Linux distros now. All right. So I had two main topics. I already covered one of them. 
let's go ahead and start recording again, and then we're going to get into our main topic. Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Well, today we're going to talk about tips to pick up a, uh, how to pick a Linux distro that you're going to stick with for a while. Uh, so this actually, this question came to me, somebody said I should do this as a top five, and I thought, well, number one is I already have a couple top fives picked out for the next few weeks. And number two, I'm not sure exactly how I would pick a top five with this topic, but it was an excellent video idea. Excuse me. Um, so here is, uh, here's what we have. Uh, we're going to talk about picking a distro and this just comes down to a lot of questions. And the great news about Linux is there's something for everybody. Uh, whether you like modern themes or things that look like they were spawned from the days of Windows 3.1, um, whether you want uh, constantly upgrading brand new cutting edge software or you're just kind of happy that your system never goes anywhere. Um, Whatever type of icons, views, appearances, and how you update your system, those are all questions that you're going to want to ask, okay? Um, so these are kind of the, the, kind of the order. I'll do these in the order they make the most sense. So the first question I would have is, do you already understand how one of the installation cores work? Do you know apt? Do you know Pac-Man? Do you know one of these? Uh, one of the reasons I generally stay in the Debian family is I don't have a lot of time to sit down and learn things. Um, I'm, uh, I got a lot of things going on, and a lot of us have a lot of things going on. There's a number of people that have time to sit down and learn every Linux distro and every package manager and everything and every Windows manager, etc. And that's great, and we need those people, and we need those people to also do videos so when I do have time or questions, I can find those videos and watch them. Um, but for me... I'm a professional that just needs a system that is good, that is productive. I am always writing books. I'm creating book covers. Um, right now, I'm actually developing a book cover in 3D design, which I've never done before. So that's a learning curve in and of itself. Um, I need to, of course, write and edit books. I need to develop websites. I need to do graphics. And I don't have time to fix systems. So. For me, I already know how the Debian system works. So I generally install, if I need a web server, it's generally Debian or Ubuntu. If I'm installing a distro for a production machine, it generally is a Debian or an Ubuntu base system uh, because I know how to fix it. If something goes goofy, I don't need to do some research. I can boot up a terminal, fix stuff. I understand how the core works. Now, if you already know Pac-Man and you have no idea how the app commands work, you should definitely be doing something like a Manjaro or an Arch or anything else that uses the Pac-Man manager. Um, so that's kind of that first question. Um, do you understand one of these? If you don't, pick one to learn. And I'm not going to say one's easier to learn than the other. I think they're equally easy to learn. It's just they're different. And so figure out what you want to use and then let that kind of pick the family of distribution. Of course, Arch, you'd be looking at something pure Arch, you'd be looking at Manjaro, you'd be looking at Antrogos, and uh, there's probably some other things. Of course, also in Pac-Man, you could be looking at the SUSE branch, SUSE, Gecko, um, anything like that. Um, DNF, does Fedora still use DNF? I thought it changed. I forget. Um, but, you know, you have those issues. Of course, I, I like the Apt and, and Debian and stuff like that. So th that's kind of the first thing that I decide. And now we're not talking about testing and spinning things, kicking the tires around. We're talking about a production system. So I have a laptop over here that is a web design laptop that is used that when I am sitting down, it's, it's, uh, I, I, pick out a couple days, a couple hours every day to work. I sit down, I work, I need to get work done. That's the computer. I don't test any distros on it. I already have one operating system on it. It works perfectly fine. Everything is set up exactly the way I need it. So that's the type of computer we're talking about. Um, so that is kind of the, the first thing. Um, the second thing you might ask yourself is, do you like the challenge of learning new computer skills? Um, if you are a person with a lot of time on your hand, maybe you're young, you're just learning, you're trying to pick up extra distros, extra Linux things, extra whatever, what you might do is you might pick a system that you don't already know the core to so that you can learn it 
and take the time to figure it out. So if you're that type of person that wants the skill and the challenge. Now for me, I don't, I, I mean, I love the skill and the challenge, but on my level of priorities, it's really low versus everything else I have to do is really high and all my really high things requires me to have a functioning computer. So that I don't pick a distro that I don't already understand um, for my daily drivers. Um, the next thing I want to ask, and this is certainly one of the most important, is what works well with your hardware. Now, I am not uh, a huge fan of elementary, and a lot of the reason is I've always had bad experience on my hardware. Linux Mint, I've had great experience on hardware. Now, there's about 50% of people that have an excellent, awesome experience with elementary. And for them, it makes a lot of sense to use elementary. Um, if it works with your hardware, that's a key factor. Some people might really want to use one specific distro, but there's something about it just doesn't work right. If it's a big deal, change your distro. Find something else that does work. So ask yourself and figure out what works with the hardware you are wanting to do. Um, the next thing I look at is what style of desktop do you like? Um, I have found, and the reason I run a media PC with a variety of different desktops is I always want to learn new desktop environments. Um, that doesn't take as long to learn as package managers and things like that for me. And so I'm always experimenting with those to see if I can pick up some new skills or is there a better workflow? So I've experimented with KDE, I've experimented with GNOME, with Pantheon, with Budgie, um, all the different desktops out there, I've experimented with all these different desktops. And with that being said, um, I have found that for me, the way that Windows sets up a system is how I am the absolute most comfortable using a computer in the speed and the production I need. And that's why I like Cinnamon. Now there's three different desktop, maybe four different desktop environments that behave very much like that. Um, Cinnamon, Mate, XFCE, maybe LXDE, and Budgie, of course. Um, so those are can all be set up very much, of, of course KDE. All those can be set up like a Windows system. I prefer Cinnamon because it's kind of the closest um, without having the extra stuff that KDE has. It has a lot of modern features that Mate and XFCE don't have. Um, and it has more customizability and more features than Budgie. That's why I like Cinnamon the most. But if you are more comfortable on a Mac type environment, you might be more comfortable with Gnome or uh, Pantheon or one of those other type of things because they have more of that type of feel to it. All right. Um, now, with that being said, um, there's a variety of different desktops you could pick from. So what style desktop do you like? And do you like customizability? If you are a customizing hog, you just love customizing your distros, you want to use something like KDE or, or Cinnamon that just has a lot of customizability. If you're like, I don't want to customize nothing, um, Pantheon, Gnome, um, Budgie's kind of 50-50. Those don't have a ton of customization in them. Uh, Gnome has none except for extensions. Pantheon has none, period. And if you try and fix it, we're going to break it. Uh, um, and Budgie is Budgie has some customization, but not a ton. Um, I scared my kitty. I'm sorry, kitty. I scared kitty. <laughs> He's like, whoa, that was loud. Um, so ask yourself, what type of desktop do you like? Um, and then, of course, with that, what type of look do you like? Uh, Pantheon, hard to change the icons. It's doable, but it's it's not as easy uh, as it is to change in most other desktops. Um, do you like the flat designs? Do you want something that uh, has desktop icons built for it and more modern trend? Or do you want to go something an older trend? Uh, things like that. So that's kind of what I take it there. Um, the next question is which applications and which versions do you want to use? So this is going to determine, do you want a rolling release type distro or do you want something that's static and stable? The good old granddaddy of static and stable is Debian. I mean, that thing gets a new version about every time we have an ice age. I mean, it's the oldest Linux distro. We are at version nine. Okay. Um, versus something like Arch where everything is perpetually changing. Um, I could run I could run the same program three different days in a row and it'll be a different version every single time. Um, so ask yourself that. 
So for me personally, I want my applications to never change. I don't want things to change. For me, I'm happy with security updates. I want to get the security updates. I don't want any feature updates. I've gotten used to the application. I am not learning it how to fix something. And, and for me, every time I figure out how to do something, I get a great new feature. I get a great new whatever. That's when they come along and change it and get rid of the feature that I thought was great. So I want to stick with the old features the, the way they were. Um, other people, though, you really want to have some of the latest and some of the greatest applications. You want the absolute latest versions, and there's places that make sense. Kden Live shipping under Linux Mint for several years didn't work right. It was a buggy version. If you put in the uh, the stable PPAs, you could get the latest version and always have the latest Kden Live. I do that, um, but for the most part, I don't like to do that. I want to stick with a, a version that works, and I don't want the system to change a lot. That's why I like Debian. That's why I like Linux Mint because that's kind of the way they work. Um, so if you don't, if you want all those latest, you want to go with like the OpenSUSE, um, uh, the OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, which is a rolling release. You want to go with um, uh, maybe maybe um, KDE Neon, although it's not technically a rolling release because the base stays the same. The KDE applications may update more frequently. The non-KDE ones may not. Um, that kind of depends. Um, you would want to do an Arch or a Manjaro or an Antergos, something in that general family. That way you'd get all those. And then the last thing you'd want to ask is what is your backup strategy look like? And I hope you have one. Um, for me, my backup strategy is kind of operating system agnostic. I, I don't use any tools for that. I have a specific day of the month. That day, everything goes through, master backups get made. All my systems are good, so if I ever have a catastrophic loss, I lose no more than one month's worth of work. Um, and that's the way that we should be doing things. Now, a lot of people like to use tools. So things like Linux Mint that I use, uh, the Ubuntu and most of your Ubuntu derivatives, they all have backup tools. Linux Mint, of course, now has the time shift, which is kind of like a backup for your operating system, like the way Windows has restore points. Um, is it time? Is that right? Yeah, time shift. I think that's right. I I, I called it the Mac the the Mac program that does the same thing the other day, and someone called me out on it. <laughs> My apologies. Um, um, but Ubuntu and Mint all have the backup application. This is an application that will run. It will automatically sync files for you, things like that. So if you rely on those type of applications, you might look at something in the Ubuntu branch that has that type of thing. So those are kind of my ways how I would do that. So let's kind of walk in through that. Why do I settle on Linux Mint Cinnamon as my core home distro? And despite that's my favorite and the one I recommend most people try, it's not for me something that I say, everyone's got to use it. Um, so do I understand one core? Yes, I know Debian. And Linux Mint is based on Ubuntu, which is based on Debian. So it works. Um, what applications, what versions? I don't like stuff to change a lot. Linux Mint, stuff doesn't change a lot. I like it. Um, what works with my hardware? Uh, I personally haven't had a computer that doesn't work well with Linux Mint. Um, they do exist, um, but I haven't had those issues. Um, and uh, for me, um, uh, for me, I use Linux Mint because it works with the hardware. Do I like the challenge of learning new computer skills? Uh, this is a loaded question for me. I like the challenge, but I don't have time for the challenge. Linux Mint has never broken on me. And so for me, that's good. Um, what does my backup strategy look like? Uh, it doesn't matter what operating system I use because I manually run my backups. Uh, and what uh, style desktop do I like? For production, I like something that resembles Windows. So that's why I use Linux Mint 7. So that's kind of my walkthrough. You need to ask yourself those types of questions, and that will hopefully lead you to a distro. And there are a ton of great distros out there. Um, you know, if you just need basic uh, email applications and things, and you don't ever want to um, mess with any system settings or whatever else, Elementary might be it, Solace might be it. Um, you know, there's just so many different, uh, so many different distros out there. So asking those questions hopefully is helpful to help you figure out which distro. So what are the questions you like to ask? Let us know in the comments down below.
All right. <clears throat> Lots more comments. Uh, remember, you can't talk about politics. You'll start a flame war. <laughs> hey, every now and again, I like the flame war. Controversy causes views. Work for an ISP, and we have to delete IP addresses from all logs not being used for troubleshoot purposes. Cool. <clears throat> nation state is a failure. Most people have been killed by creating, maintaining, or expanding nation state borders than anything else. Yeah. Evening, Steve. How's it going there? Uh, yeah, well, you know, my Linux respin is the best, so that's the Linux topic. Over. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, switch from Windows. All right. Tom, my cat just come out of the bed. Where's CJ? CJ, your digital girlfriend is here. I'll see if he shows up. Uh, okay, so why why no one talks about Red Hat? Have you ever used it? Oh, here's CJ. Uh oh, come here! Stop! 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 Got to flee. Of course, it hopped that way. But as long as it hopped away from the cat, I'm good. Nothing over there that can cause it to live. <laughs> All right. So, yes, apparently he does still have fleas. I just got one off him. So. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. Oh, Hi, Cyber Girlfriend. How are you? All right. Why no one? Okay, have I used it? No, I haven't, mostly because it's, it's more of an enterprise-type system. And uh, I'm a freelancer. I don't work in enterprises. <clears throat> I can call Mint. Na 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 na. Is that na 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 Linux man? I don't know. Uh, what is Windows? Um, it's a thing that you look out. It's in your house, usually in the wall, and you can look out it and see through it. Yep. About the next top five community distros. Yeah, I keep on. Uh, I keep on wanting to install more, but I'm still running Debian over there, and I like it. I don't know. Keep hearing politicians blame Russia for everything. Don't you know that, that Russia even interfered with a church potluck vote? Yeah, I, I, I Russia is being used to fear monger more than anything right now, and it's stupid. I like MX better than Mint. Very good. Currently torn between Linux Mint and Zubuntu. Okay. Horses for courses. Amiga Workbench is where it's at. All right. Did anyone see Debian's new way of downloading their ISO? You have to rely on a program to download multiple portions of the ISO from different servers. Well, that sounds like a torrent. They've always had a torrent. You can download it directly, though. But uh, if they've changed something in the last month or two, I haven't seen that. Picked up Ubuntu 18.04 LTS to get to know Linux. Very good. Is the most secure or best Windows 10 distro? What do you mean Windows 10 distro? Elementary long term for me? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It's not for me either, but... Uh, um, it's out there. It exists, and people have a good experience with it. So, uh, two things you never talk about: politics and religion. I specifically avoid talking about them in real life because it causes a flame war. Well, I talk about both of them. The old USSR, everyone was required to carry identification papers, so the authorities could restrict freedoms everywhere unless you were the chairman of the party. Yep. And starting in 2020, everyone in the United States has to have a real ID with them to board an airplane domestically or enter a military base. Mm. Oh, wait, not Debian base, but the control center set up. <laughs> <clears throat> Greetings, Skybear. How's it going? 
I have a massive VM collection. Okay, we talk about both. No real issues at all. Light for here, although Mint 19 is fine. Main hard drive is Light 3.8. Very good. Is it wrong to show someone booting into Cinnamon in 8 seconds and not mentioning an NVMe drive? Wait, what? Six seconds on spinning disk running Trinity and dual fast system V. <laughs> uh, I just mentioned I'm not on a full kernel. There you go. Learn Linux at 59. Old electronics. Tech. Sick of Windows like an old rambler. Nash runs fine with daily maintenance. There you go. Still have my first Linux Live CD, Zorin OS 6.2 Lite. Nice. XFCE for life, LXQT, all right. <clears throat> Love the Cinnamon desktop, then XFCE, then Budgie. KD is too much of a project to make perfect. I don't know. I, I really like my KDE build. I haven't touched it in months. Hey, Gnome, but I like Pantheon. The menu could be better, but it's tolerable. Okay, yeah. Open box. I don't got time to learn open box, man. Uh, and technically, iOS have a track record of being more secure, uh, but I've used Android for many years and I've never had any issues. Unity for life. Well, if you still have the whole system that's installed in its LTS. <laughs> Is it hard to learn new distros? Eh, I don't think so. Uh, Is it wrong? that it took MX Linux longer to shut down than my OS took to boot. Uh, you might occasionally get that. If it's a constant problem, you might want to look into it. Uh, he's typing Chinese characters. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, he's um, carbon programmer is typing Chinese characters. It's a yeah. It's Carbon Programmer is giving a coded message. He's saying this this switch to Linux guy. He's a Fruit Loop man. Stay away from that dude. He's crazy. That's what he's saying. He's just doing it that way because I can't read it. You know? <laughs> mm, I like to make up a Bash script for my desktop environment instead of having a preset. I launch the individual programs. Oh, he says who can speak Chinese? Okay, thank you. I thought he was insulting me, man. No. Uh, like, YouTube keeps on putting crazy things into... They like, keep on adding extra crap that I don't want. I don't think anybody wants into it. And they can't fix a stupid chat bug. I actually push the wrong button and it scrolls immediately to the bottom and I lose place where I'm at. Uh, okay. Should I run... Linux, I'm guessing in a VM. I would try it in a VM, yeah. Before I asked how to install non free Debian, now I can't download the ISO due to their new system of downloading the ISO they implemented. I'll have to look into that. That's interesting. A machine that's allergic to any distro with system D. Can't boot a single one. Wow. Mint broke once for me. It was my fault. I sued a DD to command. Didn't understand. I think I set off. Yeah, that'll do it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I like my Linux desktop to look as different from Windows as possible. I want people to know I'm using Linux. Politics should be separated from tech talk, so many forums follow that rule, and there are many reasons. You're sarcastic. I've already left. Bye, Chris. 
Well, once again, for anybody else who jumped on late, I hope you're also leaving Apple and Airbnb and Microsoft and Uber and Facebook and Twitter and Lyft and did I forget anybody? Because those are all tech companies that are talking about it. So later, yo. By the way, I didn't talk politics. Did anybody notice that? I didn't talk politics. I talked about an issue at our border. Just see, and that's kind of the way we, that's kind of the way our brains sometimes think. It's like, I'm talking about something that's so core related to politics. You cannot even separate the issue from your politics because you, you think automatically I'm going to say something that you disagree with and you think I'm talking politics. I didn't talk politics at all. I didn't say one thing that was political. I talked about our legal system. Funny how it happens that way. I had to miss this whole thing because I hate pizza. What? You hate pizza? You hate yourself? What? Pizza, pizza. Um, let's see. Uh, use Linux Mint XFC for the same reason you do, Tom. Most people say it's boring, but it's boring. Yeah, okay. Um, you're not knowledgeable. You're narcissistic. You absolutely should be border controls, but you're clearly way too low on the IQ scale. You're a moron. Well, guess what you are? You are reported for abuse. Yeah, hate speech, buddy. Oh, that should have been that should have been harassment though. Bye. Don't call someone a moron if they have the ability to report you for harassment and abuse, man. Duh. Um Okay. Anyone know how to game on Linux? Would love to game on Linux without Microsoft ducking me dry. I don't know about how to game on Linux. Use Arch, which I installed using Arch Kick. Very good. Really want to build my own OS. Just looking for tools to do it. Well, check out uh, Satair's uh, um, uh, Arch Kick script. You can install Steam, Steam on Linux. Yep. Controversies for people, not cheap. Woohoo! I'm I'm actually surprised. That's a that's 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 a bigger upload up like ratio than I was expecting. I use Light and Mint XFCE. I customize them in a heartbeat. Okay. Russia's not a threat. China is. Yeah, but but China produces all of our all of our cell phones for us for pennies on the dollar. So. They're okay. I stubbed my toe this morning. Dang Russians. That's right, man. They put that chair on your walking path instantly using their special Russian time freezing devices. They froze time, put a chair right in your walking path, reinstituted time, and teleported their way out of there. Hmm. Not a torn, it's a specialized program. Okay, I will look into it. Archkick video didn't give me credit even though I added budgie deep. Oh, I, I didn't know you did, pizza. I'm sorry. Seem to like people that agree with you. Alon proves you shouldn't be discussing politics. Get out of your mom's basement. Screw you, Mr. Chris Taylor. I'm sorry, but I don't live in my mom's basement. We're going to report you again for harassing and bullying. And I think mods, just go ahead and report Chris Taylor if you want. I'm sorry, I haven't lived in my mom's basement since, guess what? I graduated college and I moved out and I never had to go back since. Thank you. Sounds like you're the one who can't take people disagreeing with you. My apologies. Um, Just installed Pop OS. Pop OS is cool. Yeah, I like Pop. Uh, I think that this might be something better to put on your website in a video about a list of alternatives to common Windows programs. Hmm, that might be it. That that's a good idea. I like that.
Okay, let's see. Simply doing ISO by making Squash FS, then making the bootloader and DD damage to an ISO file. Okay. It's my opinion of Pop OS. I like it. Um, it's, I mean, I don't like GNOME, but Pop OS is pretty cool. Um, I actually did a live discussion of it once, but the video never actually got um, edited and put out, so I should actually redo it soon. I've heard a muffler in my audio in 1994, test drove without my wallet, got a $60 ticket, no license with me. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, Steve depends on the bloat getting booted. Jeesh. This mint is quite tough. I took a hard drive on mint out of the computer, put it in a completely different one, booted up, no issues. Try that with Windows. Yep. That's the thing. You can't do that with Gen 2, though, either. But first live Linux was Arch Linux, made in 2014. Wanted to customize it, but it was command line install. I thought all Linux distros were like this until I tried to get too much later. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Both use Windows and Linux. Windows, okay. Oh, I download it. Maybe I'm just, let's see. Yeah, I'll, I'll look into it. Um, and uh, if it's something if it's something weird that I can resolve, I'll see if I can uh, do a video on it. Shell script because I'm working on something that will make installing Linux applications easier, less time consuming. Said I hate, I meant to eight. <laughs> I was going to say pizza. I didn't think you hated pizza. I mean, if you hate pizza, dude, we're weird. That's weird. Mm -hmm. All right. When I said I hate these mints, see, I hate eat. Yeah, I ate myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, cannibalism at Pizza Loving Nerd, yep. Pizza, I'm going to make some pizza this week with traditional pizza, and then we're going to try on uh, Sunday, we're going to do a buffalo chicken pizza. First time I'm going to attempt making that. No idea how to do it. We're going to figure it out, though. Um, Pop OS, do I consider it on my main machine? No, I don't, and just because I don't like GNOME. Um, it's, I'm not, I'm not productive or fast in GNOME. That's the only reason I wouldn't use it on my main system. I would put it on my media PC, but, uh, I wouldn't put it on my main system. <clears throat> building the ISO, you can look at my live CD script. Pizza, you better not be drunk off vodka, boy. I know how old you are. Uh, greetings, Robert. How's it going there? Got modern titles. Tom M. Tom. <laughs> All right. Nah, I don't boot anyone. I'm 100% free speech, and the guy gets a bloody edit. Well, here's the thing, paper, paperback. It wasn't. It was the fact that when you start insulting someone, you're done. This community doesn't deal with that. You can disagree with somebody without insulting them. <laughs> okay. So the, you and moron, get in your mom's basement. No, I'm not in my mom's basement, actually. Um, sorry. Um. Long stream tonight. Yeah, I like doing longer streams. I just don't always have time for it. All right. Resident Arms, Philadelphia, PA area. Sandwich on a roll.
Issue with YouTube chat is only on Firefox. I've had it open scrolling through Firefox, never on Chrome. Huh, okay. Kind of like a uh, kind of like a sub or what you're doing the same thing. We have wonderful steak and cheese hoagie at a local. Ooh, yummy. Make a video on that on your cooking channel. Yeah, what I you what I do is I'll develop the the recipes like uh, the next one we're going to be doing is my um, multi-purpose flour mix, which is used for tortillas, Cheez-Its, flatbreads, um, burrito wraps, um, a few other few other things. That's the next one we're going to do. Um, and then yeah, eventually I'll get to it. Mail you some. All right. Gnome isn't fast on a 32 gig 16 processor machine. No, not really. Okay. Is there going to be wheat? Because if there would be no wheat, well, it'd be better for your health. Um, I actually have a um, a carb-free pizza mix. Um, it's not particularly it like it's not bad. It's just not super good. And if I'm going to waste calories i like to be good so like i don't like getting like there's the low carb cookies that are made with like you know alternative flowers and things oh gag me with a spoon they're nasty the only one of the alternative flowers if you ever make homemade snickerdoodle cookies replace about two or three um tablespoons of the flour with almond flour and it is amazing there's something about the almond flour like the almond flavor that gets in a snickerdoodle cookie and just intensifies the flavor of it it's amazing best cookie dough i've ever had and cookies too um if the dough lasts long enough to make cookies um but for the most part if i'm gonna eat a cookie i want it to taste good i'm not gonna eat cookies that taste like mulch because I'm trying to cut carbs. I'd rather just, you know, run an extra little distance or something. Uh, Kyrie Holmes is quicker in gnome than cinnamon. And that's a perfect example of what I'm talking about. You need to figure out what works for you because for me, I'm not faster in gnome as much as I've tried. But if you are, you want to go with a gnome based system. That's why I love Linux. There's options. Most libertarians should use Linux. I don't agree. I agree. Uh, love the long stream. This one's definitely interesting. Yeah, it's it's always interesting when I get this many thumbs downs. Woohoo! Are we up to twenty yet? <laughs> uh, experienced many problems with YouTube on Firefox. How to know which version of kernel I should use? I've had problems with recent versions. Had to go back to an older version. Ooh. Um, usually like, I'm not sure I'd use a kernel 4.1 that might have some security bugs in it. I just don't know for sure. Um, generally I would let whatever operating system I'm using install the kernel at once. It's weird that an older kernel is what's needed. Sometimes it's the newer ones you would need depending on hardware, but um, that's an unusual one. 2012 Toshiba. I'm running four. I'm probably running 413 on this if, is my guess. I haven't looked lately, but, um, I would use a version of kernel that doesn't give you problems that still has some security updates. Only prescription drugs are good. If you, if if you're own a prescription for them, if you're addicted to prescription drugs, that's bad. Also, I can find caffeine useful because it can. Caffeine. Tomato sauce was so useful as it can be in many good things. Yes. The tomato sauce, I actually use that tomato sauce to make pizza sauce. Uh, regular marinara, you can also use it for sloppy joes. And, you know, um, I've actually used it for uh, like a marinara on a... Um, uh, chicken parmesan as well before sounds like birds in the background yeah there's some birds out there do more of these current issues streams i was actually thinking about doing more of the current issue stuff on my christian channel because it definitely fits the theme over there better than this channel um it's it's kind of on my list of things to think about i don't like go diving into these controversial issues nearly as much um just because I try and keep this channel 
fairly neutral and focused on the li the Linux, the tech, the privacy, that kind of stuff. Um, that's more what I try and do. This one's just a weird issue because how many companies are out against it? It's like our whole world's going crazy and they're forgetting the fundamental thing that people are breaking the law at our borders and we have to deal with them. Hmm... Yeah, I generally stay away from prescription drugs myself unless it's something I absolutely know I need. Like, you know, if you get a bacterial infection, you want an antibiotic. I'm I'm good with that. But I, unfortunately, I have a doctorate in toxicology. I know what these drugs do to the body, and I'm not interested. Um, it's it's got to be something big for me to do a to do a pharmaceutical. Um, natural medicines are not bad though. If you have a willow tree nearby and you have a headache, making making a decoction of willow is, you know, better than taking aspirin. So, um, things like that. Uh, I know medics, so I have to be okay. Fourteen thumbs down, thirty-four up. All right, there you go. If you want gnome to be fast, you need uh, I nine. <laughs> I should try putting gnome on this computer. See how it does. The thing I love about Pantheon is its grid app menu. Really, really nice. Wish there were alternatives to the whisker menu. Nothing's wrong with AMD. I'm on AMD right now. Mm, excuse me. Uh, for 16. Did I miss the tomato sauce recipe? I put it up last Monday, I think. Um, so yeah, there's a tomato sauce recipe over on the channel. So I'm, I'm experimenting with doing a new format where I'm going to be recording a lot of base videos and then we're going to be recording videos like sh we're going to keep the video shorter. So when I do the pizza sauce video, instead of actually walking you through the entire process, we're going to start by referencing the pizza sauce video. So you got to watch the pizza sauce video and then come in. And once you have your tomato sauce, here's how to take your tomato sauce and convert it into pizza sauce. That way I can start with individual bases and then utilize those recipes for a variety of different things. It'll be a way to cross-link the channel back and forth and things like that. So, yeah, it was put up last week and uh, hopefully in a week or two I'll put up the uh, flour tortilla mix. Trick is good salsa. Uh, the trick to good salsa is garlic. Yes, I agree. Garlic is good in anything. I should make a political channel. I don't know, man. Hundred percent, the border thing will be demonetized. Let's check. Are we currently demonetized? There was a fun question. Whoop. I don't know. I can't tell right now. Very well might be, though. If you're going to treat yourself to junk food, you should do it properly, not try and turn it into health food because it's missing the point entirely. Amen to that. <laughs> I like debates. It gets interesting. Yeah, as, as, long as, as long as you're not sitting here going, you're a moron, you're a moron, get out of your parents' basement. I'm sorry, I'm not in my parents' basement. I'm not in my parents' basement. Moved out right out of college, never had to go back. Run my own companies, thank you. Um, oh wait, you're pro border patrol. I was saying you were against the, no, no, I, I'm not, I don't like necessarily the way ice is doing things. I don't like the power they have. I don't like the, the direction they're going. It's getting scary. Okay. I don't like all that, but I also don't like thousands of people entering my, this country every single day in droves 
sex trafficking children that may or may not be theirs, taking all of our jobs, taking all of our resources and costing the country millions of dollars. I don't like that. So I either have to deal with the evil of a whole bunch of people that we have no information on illegally entering the country or people stopping them at the border. Mm. Please stop them at the border. But I think that we should take a firm stance against a lot of the, the big data methodology that ICE is using. I disagree with that. And I think that ICE's, um, uh, I think that their, uh, their reach should be greatly reduced. Five miles within the border, buddy. That's what you got. Um, and, you know, let the cities figure it out on their own. That's my thought. So, like I said, I'm hard. I mean, I, I'm not, I don't sit on any one guy's position. And, and that's the way anybody who thinks is. I'm not either on this side or on that side at all. Okay. I'm not. It's, it's, it's a hard question. That's what I'm saying. I, I think we need Border Patrol, but they need to have less impact and reach. That's what I think. I have a headache or sore throat. I drink tea. Yes, that's good. Like debates, you hear a side of an argument, you probably didn't occur to you. Yeah, I think we should legalize weed as we let our community regulate it without the government. Your community will promote the right path. We should revolutionize culture. Uh, let our community regulate it without government. I, see, Eric, the, the, thing, the thing I don't like about that is I have seen what the long-term impact of smoking marijuana does, and it's not pretty. Um, that's really where my problem is. And, you know, I lived not far from Colorado before, and when, you know, that and Washington was, you know, became the first states, it caused a lot of problems down there. Everyone's talking about all the positives. They aren't talking about all the negatives, and there were a lot and it's it's an issue. Um, I am okay to say medicinal. Zero problem with medicinal. But when we start saying we want to take this drug, which alters our brain chemistry over a period of time and make it legal, I, it's not good for society. That's my take on it. Um, with medications, my wife as a nurse says, I do not blame you. Yeah. Make AMD great again. AMD is already great. Yeah. <laughs> is Linux Mint budgie stable? Um, I had zero problems with it. Did I have any problems with it? I don't think I had any problems with it. Um, every now and again, it would not like you'd go to log in. It wouldn't log in, but that was actually because the disk was taking up. Like there was too much disk space being used. I had it installed on a 32 bit drive. Um, so I wasn't surprised about that at all. Um, but yeah, actually, I don't recall having any problems with that at all. And I have a video about how to make that if you don't know how. Is distro stable is a YMMV question. What? I don't know. Oh, 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 variables. Ha ha. Thank you, presenters. Variables. I get it now. Is whatever this distro is a, um, what's YMMV? I don't know. I drink grape juice. It's pretty tasty. Is it old grape juice? <laughs> uh, I have anxiety and OCD, but I do not take medication for I manage with cognitive counseling. It helps. Thank you. Ryzen 7, 2700. It's a bulldozer. Yeah. Eating Chex Mix. Mm. Oh, your mileage may vary. Thank you. Uh, Next build will be AMD, but sadly, my current is Intel. I went with the AMD, and I love it. Zero regrets on going with AMD for me. Have my current yet oldish Intel CPU in this. My CPU agnostic, it works. I currently agree with you on the immigration. It's way out of control. I think ICE is forced to take take drastic measures. Yep. Yeah, that's why it's this is not an easy question. But giving people a carte blanche approval to enter the country is just not right either. So a mix of conservative and liberal. My dad's very liberal. Gets pissed off by my French when we talk politics. <laughs> 
You know, but the thing is, man, it's something we got to talk about. We can't shove any topic completely under the under the, t- the gate, you know. Against weed, too, most people don't want to admit it. There are long-term effects. I don't mind someone who personally smokes it, but I'm against it. Won't touch it. Yeah. I mean, you can legalize it all you want. I'm not going to smoke it, but I think it would be bad for our society as a whole if we did. America needs to occupy half of Mexico, make it great, then they won't need to illegally immigrate. There you go. ICE is good for taking violent criminals, but they should have checks because they're violating our Bill of Rights. Exactly. And that, Eric, is exactly the way I believe, that they are way too invasive. But at the same time, they have a hard task to cover. They do. The Bill of Rights does not apply to non-citizens, and that's exactly the thing. The challenge is is that they're creating a dragnet that citizens are getting caught in, and that's where the problem comes into play. And so figuring out a resolution to that is not easy. He said, I uh, I just eat rice, chicken, and beef. And he said, what am I doing? I play indiscriminately. Then he said, I had dinner. Uh-huh. Uh, I have no idea, carbon programmer. No, no clue. Given you were a former chemistry professor, I tend to agree with you. I was on the fence about being recreational and taxed. Yeah, I mean, it's, I'm not saying I have all of the answers, but I mean, for me, I grew up in an environment where there were a lot of drugs and I've seen the long-term effects that it does on people. The people that I know of who were smoking and are still smoking weed from high school to now, they tend to not be quite as successful as the people who've chosen not to do that. That is a lot for me on that. I mean, I'm not saying I absolutely have every answer on that. Um, But, you know, and I knew one guy way back in the day, you know, I'm I'm in college studying, studying biochemistry and he's like, oh, we have a receptor for it. I said, yeah, no kidding. Everything that impacts your body, you have a receptor for. Otherwise, it's like sucralose. It passes right on through. It's never absorbed. <laughs> Give you a Chinese name. No, you are a doctoral student. Oh, said, I want to give you a Chinese name. <laughs> I'm not a doctoral student. I, I finished my PhD 10 years ago, 11 years. I don't know. Long time ago. Funny story, true story. I got my PhD. You officially have your PhD when all your committee members sign your form. My last signature was obtained on Halloween and my the last person on my committee was dressed as a witch. So I literally got my PhD from a witch on Halloween. <laughs> Oh, boy. High school, I went off and served buffalo chicken pizza for lunch in the pizza line. Wow. Ultra high core mega conservative traditionalist. <laughs> Liberalist spit in my direction. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Why do you continue translating my typing? Because, because I don't read it. Okay. Mm, I want to try the... Why, why do you want to try that? Okay. Uh, paper bag. Yeah, but the government says otherwise. He, he discriminately against Hispanics with accents. Yeah. Yeah, I think they probably do in many ways. But it's, it's, it's hard, though, if you're trying to protect the border between the Mexican country, which is primarily comprised of Hispanics who speak Mexican Spanish um, to question that. It's, it's a hard question. I will completely concur. It's a hard question. But all of this, all of this whining is so bad about that's the thing that's bothering me. Because they're forgetting this whole thing about they broke the law. If apply the same thing to us Americans, then we do the same thing. Said I vote for Tom, so Tom get in it. Well, I'll try. I don't know. Sit on the couch and laugh and eat a whole bag of potato chips. Nothing special. Yeah, see, it reduces productivity, man. Turn off the boob too. You can get something done in your life. Uh, government says civil rights and bill of rights apply to to non citizens. I'm against it. Yes, yeah, see, see, um, I'm going to have to think about that one. I'm not going to comment on that. 
I had problems with my lap going to sleep mode. Oh, laptop going to sleep mode after sleep. All system game laggy and slow. Had to restart it. Okay. Uh, the issue had me on Mint Ubuntu. Sleep mode on Linux has always been a little bit, little bit weird. Hey, Bagman, they read their Miranda rights when they detain them right now. Huh. Later or not later? All right, we are going to do a final call for comments. And, of course, you guys know what that time that means it is. It is officially time to feed the kitty. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Let's see if we can get a double catter. Kitty, 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 kitty. Oh, we got a double catter. Houston, we have a double catter. We've got a double catter. All right, this right here, right here, right here. Whoa. Kitty. Hey, right here. <laughs> that other kitty cam's a little dark. My apologies. Oh, right here. Right here. Oh. And you get one more. Yeah. All right, kitty. One more. Oh, my fingers are all slobbery now. Over here is your last one. <laughs> Are they whisker looking good? Bloomsburg, Penn State was a hotbed of LSD and herbs in the 1970s. It still is today. <laughs> Except now there's a mix of fentanyl in there. Um, yeah, I'm at I'm at, I'm I'm right at Penn State main campus, and yeah, it's done a lot better. All right, buddy, you want to leave now, don't you? You're like I got my kitty treats. I was out of here, yo. Yeah, all right, go on. He just loves me for my kitty treats. That's what kind of cat he is. Uh, great stream. We're going to eat something now. Look forward to the next stream. All right. Uh, I should probably be streaming tomorrow. Uh, we'll see what I do. Um, so we will catch everybody later. And uh, enjoy, your, uh, enjoy your day. Enjoy your life. Enjoy everything else. And uh, hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.